Hi there, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to continue discussing queries in Elasticsearch, and then we'll move on to talking about one of the most powerful features Elasticsearch offers outside of full text searches. And that awesome feature is called aggregation. So we'll get into that in just a second. But right before this lecture, I provided you with a file with data that, uh, that you need to index into Elasticsearch. That data actually will be used to learn about aggregation queries in this lesson. And the command I asked you to execute was actually a new way of indexing documents. This new approach to indexing is called bulk indexing. So let me show you how to do that here. Uh, this is the file uh, that contains the documents as well as the command on the top. So rather than issuing multiple put requests for each, you know, each document, bulk index sends all the documents in one post uh, method call right here. Okay. And this is, of course, a faster way to get your data into Elasticsearch. So I'm just going to copy all of these lines, and I'm going to paste them here inside of... Well, first, uh, just make sure that you have deleted the old you know, vehicles index that we were playing around with. So let's just delete that. Okay, it doesn't exist, so that's good. So we're ready uh, to index our documents. Okay, so I just pasted all of those documents in here. This is the vehicles index in the cars type and we're using the bulk endpoint. And this is a post method call, okay? So let's hit play, and there we go. We've indexed all of those documents. Now to see what these documents look like, let's just do a, um, a match all query against the vehicle's index. So we of course need the query clause, and inside of this query, we're going to have the match all, just like that, and hit play. And there we go, it's saying that the total number of documents um, in this cars type is 16. Okay, then hits total, we have 16 documents, and these are uh, those vehicles. Okay, now really quickly, what's displayed here is actually not all 16 documents. You know, if we had hundreds of documents, it would be challenging for the browser to load all of them up. So by default, what it does is it just shows the top 10. So you can actually count this one, two, three. Uh, and just go all the way to the bottom and you'll see that only 10 documents are being shown here. So if you want to see all of the documents, um, there is a parameter that you can add as part of this query, and that's called the size parameter. And you can specify what size you want. So let's just say we want to see 20. So we know that we're, there are only 16 documents, but I'm just putting the size 20, put a comma, and uh, let's just hit play. And now if you were to count all of these documents, it would show all, all, tw uh, all 16 documents, okay? So let's look at the structure here. Each document has an ID, which was actually automatically generated by Elasticsearch. Um, we didn't specify an ID for each document. We don't really care for this particular lesson. The, there's a price for every car. So for example, this one is 12,000, the color for the vehicle. Then we have uh, the make. Uh, we have the date that it was sold. Okay, and then we have the condition, whether it's uh, a good condition or, you know, poor condition, new and uh, okay condition. There are different types of conditions. So we got colors and we got makes. We've got the date that they were sold, the price, and then the condition of the vehicle. Okay, so these are basically vehicles that we sold. Our, you know, let's just say this is an arbitrary business, a car dealership, and we're selling vehicles here. Okay, so that's the kind of data. So we can make this five as well. Let's hit play, and now this is just showing the five documents. There's also a parameter called from, and this is used to define a pagination. So from zero to five, that's what this means. It's gonna show five documents, so let's hit play, and there you go, it's just gonna show only five documents here. And then another thing we can add to this is called sort. So I'm just sort of adding uh, a few other parameters that we haven't talked about yet uh, that could be part of any query in Elasticsearch, okay? So we've got the from, the size, and then the sort. And I promise this is the last uh, thing we talk about before we get into aggregations, okay? So we can sort on a given field. So for example, if I want to sort by price, I can say, you know, price, and then specify the order in which um, we want to sort. So there's a parameter called order, and we specify whether it's ascending or descending. So to get the, um, the most expensive vehicle that we have in our index, we can sort by descending. 
like that. And this is going to sort on the price field order by descending. So let's hit play. And there we go. The most expensive car that we have is a BMW. Color is red. And this is the price, 80000 So it's sorting on the price of the vehicle. The next expensive car that we have is 35000 And this is a Dodge. And I don't know too much about cars, so I kind of made up these uh, numbers here. Um, and then the next car is a BMW again, which is 30000 and so on. Okay? So it's ordering in a descending fashion based on the price of the vehicle. So you might be wondering, you know, does it paginate just the five documents first and then sort them? Or what happens first? Well, there's a, there's a mechanism for queries. It's called a query and fetch. So the query part of this is, is, is right here. And um, it's going to first get all the documents and then it's going to sort them. All right. And this is just showing it here. This is not really only taking into account five documents. This is just how much is displayed here in the panel, okay? But we're still getting all documents. If you go to the top, notice that hits is still 16. All 16 documents were returned by running this query, but in terms of pagination, it's just showing the, the first five, and you can, you know, uh, especially in applications, you can paginate an entire set of, you know, let's say thousands of thousands of documents. You can paginate 10 at a time by using this kind of structure, okay? But understand that the query takes place first, then the sorting takes place on the entire result set that was returned by the query. So that's enough about queries for now. Let's uh, come over to the topic of aggregations. Aggregations allow for powerful data analytics. So far in the course, we weren't, you know, we weren't doing any data analytics. We were doing search. Search is about running a query to find those documents that contain our search criteria. Aggregations, on the other hand, are about gaining insight into your data from, from a high level, from a helicopter view. And this is done through summarization, right? So for example, let's say we have a large corporation with thousands of employees throughout the U.S. and we're using Elasticsearch to store the employee data. Uh, using this uh, powerful feature of aggregations in Elasticsearch, we could get insights as to, you know, which U.S. state uh, has the greatest number of our employees, or what percentage of them are females versus males? What is the average salary of our employees per state or or per city? Another example is you know which which year did the employees receive the highest bonus per state? All right, so aggregations can help businesses answer these kinds of questions and can you know guide in uh, in critical decisions. Okay. Similar to the group by clause in, in a SQL query, aggregations can allow grouping or bucketing of data. But believe it or not, Elasticsearch does these aggregations much faster than a relational database. Okay, uh, This is what makes this technology not only a, a search engine, but also a big data uh, processor. Right, It's a big player in the big data sp space, capable of scaling far better than a relational database. So if I have a query here, let me just get rid of the sort as well as this from and size parameters. And let's just make this a match and say that we want to uh, find out um, the, the count for the Dodge vehicle manufacturer. If we just do this, you know, it's going to return those documents that have the make with, with Dodge as the value. But I can actually do a count instead of search. I could do underscore count. And this is another endpoint that you want to keep in mind. It's just a quick way of getting uh, counts for different uh, you know, set of documents that are returned. So let's hit play, and it's going to say that we've got five documents that have uh, the Dodge in the make field. Okay, so five cars are manufactured by Dodge. If I change this to Toyota and hit play, it's showing that we have two documents with this condition. So this is a very basic way of aggregating our data and trying to figure out, okay, you know, how many Toyotas do we have? How many, uh, you know, Corvettes or Chevrolets do we have in our showroom? But aggregations are far more powerful. So instead of just using this count, we can still use the search API, the search endpoint, and specify something called aggregation queries. So let's define our first aggregation query. So for this, we don't need the query clause. We just need something called AGS. And you can include query clauses, and I'll show you that later. But 
For this example, we just need this AGS parameter in the JSON. And let's say that we want to find out the popular cars that we sold, all right? So we can just call it popular underscore cars. So this is just a field that I'm making up, okay? This is a field provided by Elasticsearch. This is not something that I made up. But this field, I'm making it up. And I'm going to define what this field is supposed to mean. So we need something called terms. This is an Elasticsearch API thing, right? I'm not making this field up. And as part of this terms, I need to specify the field. So I could put that here and uh, say that the make dot keyword is going to be the field that we were focused on. And I'll, I'll tell you what the keyword means in just a second. But basically, I'm trying to figure out how many uh, of each a manufacturer factored vehicle do we have. So let's hit play. Notice the hits. It's returning all of our documents first. Keep scrolling down. And all the way to the bottom, you'll see this aggregations object, which contains the results of this query. So we can actually just uh, collapse this hits thing for now. Let's collapse it. So that doesn't show the hits, and now we're only focusing on the aggregations. So notice the popular cars. Uh, that's the field that I defined here, right? I made this field up, and based on this terms query, uh, it's figuring out, you know, how many Dodges do we have? How many Chevrolets do we have? How many BMWs do we have? So this is the, the field for make, and then the doc count is just specifying how many documents do we have that contain this Dodge value in the the make field okay uh, and you can just you know look get a good summary of your data this way so the reason i didn't use just make and i used make dot keyword is because the data type for make is is a, a text data type and remember in Elasticsearch, text is put into the inverted index it's transformed and put into the inverted index so we can have sentences uh, you know entire emails or blog posts into the text field so if we were to just put make here, Elasticsearch would not know how to run aggregations on this because this this is considered textual data, and it can contain words, sentences. So aggregations are good for you know values directly values. How many of this or how many of that do we have? Not freeformed text. So that is why it's not going to work if we just use the make field. We need to specify that we want to convert it into a keyword. So Elasticsearch just considers it as one whole word. Whatever it is that exists in the, in the field, it considers that as one entire word rather than you know, a sentence or, or an entire email or blog post, okay? If I hit play, it's, it's not going to work. We need to use the keyword version of the field, which means we just want the exact value. The exact value. So with the dot keyword, we're getting the exact values here on the bottom okay so that's just a side note to keep in mind so this is just giving the count of our vehicles but let's say we want to get you know the average price per manufacturer right what is the average dodge that we have in our showroom or what is, what is the average chevrolet that we sell what is the average bmw price we can actually do that by specifying another ags after this terms query just put a comma and just say that we need another AGS. And then specify uh, the, the properties for this AG. And I'll just make up a field. I'll call it average underscore price. All right, this is a field that I'm making up. And then I need uh, to use a, uh, a keyword by Elasticsearch. It's called AVG. Okay, this is a special reserved word in Elasticsearch. Just like, you know, terms is a reserved word in Elasticsearch. We can't change that. Ags, we can't, you know, we can't rephrase it. Uh, field, we can't rephrase it. These are words provided by Elasticsearch. Similarly, this average, AVG, uh, is supposed to run an average on numerical data, and this is provided by Elasticsearch. So uh, let's run an AVG, an average, on a numeric field. So let's say we want to get the average price. We first specify the field, and then we specify the name of that field. And now for price, we don't need we don't need the dot keyword extension here because this is not a textual data. This is a numeric field. Okay, so let's hit play, and uh, we can minimize your hits here, and go down, and you'll notice that for each car manufacturer, Dodge, 
not only does it give the dock count, but it also gives the average price. So the average Dodge that we have uh, is priced at 18900 The average Chevrolet is priced at 20333 The average BMW is at 55000 and so on. So just like average price, we have something called, you know, we, we can find the minimum price or the maximum price. Basic statistics could be tabulated here. So let's try max price. And it's going to have uh, pretty much the identical syntax. So I'm just going to take this and paste it in here. But instead of AVG, this is going to be max. All right, this is another keyword provided by Elasticsearch. We don't, you know, we, I didn't make this one up. I made max price up, I made average price up, but I didn't make up this AVG. Okay, this is a field provided by Elasticsearch. So we want to run a max function on the price uh, for uh, each one of the vehicle types that we have. So let's hit play. Um, let's minimize the hits here and notice that the max price is 35000 for the Dodge. That's the most expensive Dodge that we have. The most expensive Chevrolet that we have is 28000 the most expensive BMW we have is 80000 and so on. So just like max price, we also have, uh, you know, we can tabulate the minimum price for the vehicle uh, for each manufacturer. So let's just copy this, and I'm going to put a comma and paste it here. Instead of max, I'm just going to say min price, and just change this to min. This is another function that Elasticsearch provides. So let's hit play, and now let's minimize the hits we can see the max, min, as well as the average. Now, it might get annoying because every request that we're making, it shows the hits, right? It shows our documents. The reason it's showing this is because sometimes you want to be able to not only run an aggregation like this, but also get at the data. Uh, so, for example, let's say we, we create a query here, just like we were doing before. Put a comma here and just specify in this what type of query we want. So I could do a match match query and specify that the color should be, for example, green. So now, uh, or, or let me pick something that I know is more common in this data set, red. I know we got a, a lot of red vehicles. So now this aggregation is going to run in the scope of this query condition on the documents that match this query condition, okay? So let's hit play. And there we go, we see a total of five hits returned now. It doesn't return all, you know, 16 documents. It's now only returning five. So these are those red uh, vehicles. We got a red Dodge, we got a red BMW. The scope for this aggregation now has been narrowed down to just this query. And now down here, these aggregations, you'll see that, you know, we, we, we got a Dodge, it's showing only three. A dock count for BMW is only showing one. And for the Chevrolet, it's showing only one. And notice that the numbers are different. The most expensive BMW that we have is 80,000. It's, it's the color red. And uh, the Chevrolet, we only have one red vehicle. And it's showing the min, max, and average price to be the same because it's just one vehicle. So that's why it shows these documents on the top as well in case, you know, we wanted to be able to uh, access them uh, running the query. So you have an option of just minimizing the hits to, to view your aggregations, or you could just uh, put size. Remember the size parameter that I introduced you before we talked about aggregations? So I could just say that the size should be zero. And now it's not going to display the individual documents, the individual hits. It's just going to query for red cars, but those red cars are not going to be displayed. These aggregations will still apply on the red cars, okay? Size doesn't mean that the result set changed. Size just means that only show that many documents. And if we say zero, it's just not gonna show those documents. But understand that this um, aggregation is going to run on this entire query. So let's hit play. And there we go, the hits. It's, you know, it's showing that there's total five documents, but it's just not displaying them in the hits. It just saves some real estate here on the screen, okay? All right, so there's uh, plenty more to talk about with regards to aggregations. We're not done yet, but this lesson is already, you know, about to hit the 20-minute mark. So I'm just going to wrap it up here, and we're going to continue on aggregations in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.